country. This is News 2 Today. Good Saturday morning and happy race day to the, everyone running in the low country. Today is April 6th. I'm Olivia Parsons. And first, we want to go straight out to the starting line of the right Cooper now, River Bridge honey. Run, where running just took off, and that's where we find News 2's Taylor Murray. It's awesome. Guys, the runners have just taken off right here at the 42nd annual Cooper River Bridge Run. As you can see right behind me, runners just ran by. That is the elite running group. They just took off. I am told that there are 35,000 runners participating here today. I've been here since this, this morning, and the atmosphere is crazy. There's families here, experienced runners here. There's even people that are going to be walking a little bit later on, so we're going to bring you coverage throughout the whole experience. It's awesome right here, but back to you guys in studio. And if you have family and friends doing the bridge run, we want to see how's it going live. Tune in to News 2's Facebook page this morning to watch the bridge run with Rob Fowler. But now let's head to downtown to the finish line, and that's where we find News 2's Logan Reaver. Logan, what's going on? Yeah, guys, here with the winner of the wheelchair division, Creed Shabor, with a time of 24 minutes and 29 seconds. Creed Shabor joining me now. Talk about this feeling right now going through your head. Oh, fantastic. Always, always great to win, and uh, especially coming here, it's one of the one of my favorites, and yesterday being inducted as uh, in the Hall of Fame here, even better, you know, if you can pull off a, a, a win with that, it's, it right. makes the weekend great. And you're surrounded by a bunch of young guys here. What is it like to do it maybe with a couple of gray hairs here at this event? Oh, it's awesome to, to, to come here and to rip them apart and then go home and, and just feel good about it. No, no quite honestly, I, I, uh, I have respect for all the athletes here, young guys, old guys. I am just you know, a little bit more experienced, and uh, and I appreciate the, the 30 years of racing that I have under my belt. Do you think any of that experience played in throughout the course itself? Today, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, on the climb, a lot of times when you go over the bridge and someone drops you, you feel like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give up a little bit. But just because of my experience, I was just holding, holding, holding uh, until I knew because I know the downhill. I'm experienced enough to pass him on the downhill with my positioning and. Uh, uh, my air position in my chair, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, and uh, when I get on the flats, I know what kind of speed he would go, so I know my speed should just be right about the same, or maybe a little bit slower, as long as he don't, you know, totally close that gap on me. So yeah, it worked. Yeah, yeah amazing stuff. Yeah. Well, congratulations once again. Thank, Thank you, you so much for the time. Chris Jabort, your winner for the 2019 Wheelchairs Division here at the Bridge Run. We are still waiting on the runners, obviously, to get there, as you saw Taylor at the starting line. But here we are at the finish line as we wait on that. Still much more to come, but for now, here at the finish line, Logan Reaver, News 2 Sports. Now, News 2 live coverage of the Cooper River Bridge Run, sponsored by Cruise Chevrolet. The Cooper River Bridge Run began 42 years ago without sponsors. Now the race is responsible for growing $30 million in profit. That's Julian Smith, family and friends who are going to be watching today. They know that he passed away just last month, but he's grown this race into what it is today. News 2's Laura Smith takes a look at his legacy here in the Low Country. It's not just a race. It's an experience. It's one of the largest. That hooked late Julian Smith years before he became director in 1994. In the early days, I was a runner and I ran it every year with some guys from work. Smith had a vision for the Cooper River Bridge Run. Try and make it better and better for people when they come. And he did just that. What's the goal? What's the goal? Run, 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 run! He has built something in a community that is second to none. We're going to do QR codes on the race bibs. So. You know, people just say they love Charleston. They love coming here. And it's so much fun. It's their best race. And I tell you, I've met so many wonderful people all over the country. And it's just fun. That joy he found in his job kept him going as race director for 25 years. It took so much work going into it, you know. In October of 2018, Julian was our everyday hero, sitting down with anchor Brendan Clark. Do you like the old bridges or the new bridge better? I've liked all of them. <laughs> the old bridge, the, the Grace Bridge, was the scariest one to run over. In this interview, Julian was battling brain cancer while putting finishing touches on this year's race. Everybody 
took really good care of me. For, and my family has done so much for me. Even my 92-year-old mother has said the nicest, sweetest things to me during this time. In January, his health declined, forcing him to step down. We're now going to continue forward in the spirit of what Julian Smith has been doing for 20 years. The news rocked the Charleston community. He always had that mustache no matter what. He started growing a mustache when he was 15 and he had one ever since. It will be tough not to see him at the start line this year, but you can guarantee to see Julian lookalikes all over. We're all trying to grow mustaches because that was his signature. Join the tribe. Rock a mustache comes Saturday in honor of Julian Smith. It's a great way for Charleston to say thank you. So if you see lots of mustaches during today's bridge run, they're in honor of Julian. And we want you to share your stash with us. Send it over to our social media so we can see all of you using the hashtag mustache for Julian. Keep it here. We have more live coverage of the bridge run coming up. The Flower Town Festival also underway in Somerville. It's one of the largest events of the year in the town. Full of fun, crafts, and food all weekend long. Flower Town is celebrating its 47th year, hosted by the local YMCA to support its health and wellness programs. Vendor Jim Owens makes cowboy and cowgirl swings, and this is his fourth year at the festival. <laughs> Flower Town is one of our favorite shows. You got a bunch of good people here, and you also got a beautiful park to display our product. We're real proud to be here. And we are headed out to Rob Fowler. He's out at the race. You can see he's plenty of runners driving by. They're downtown right now. This is a live look. If you're down there with Rob, make sure you hashtag so that we know that they're with you. It's countonto.com. You can find us there or go on to our Facebook Count On Two as well as our Twitter. And tag Ariel and I because we're hanging out at the studio watching all the fun from the cameras. And we would love to come back and share it with our viewers. Next on News 2. Coming up later, a low country soldier is back home with his family this morning. We'll show you that sweet reunion. But before we go, let's take a look at what's trending on countonto.com right now. A teen couple from Myrtle Beach celebrates their final moments in special ceremony. Plus, Berkeley County EMS crews save a man's life and reunite for days later. And Fisher Price is warning about rock and play due to infant death reports. Stay in the know, on the go with the News 2 app, sponsored by Wired Installations.